Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video is about Midgard duration, which is, I think, a pretty complicated topic from embryology. And I personally had to read it a like multiple times, and now I've understood it, so I'm teaching you guys. So before we go get to the rotation part, I would like to get to the midgut part because as we know, this is how it looks like. We have a bilaminar germ disc, and then we have a trilaminar germ disc. How did we get from here to having a midgut which can rotate? So that's we're gonna see. That happens. That happens because of the folding of the embryo. So here itself, you can see the steps. The folding starts. Actually, the folding is both anterior posterior and it is also widthwise. But it's not necessary to know all that. Just that initially we have this yolk sac as you can see here. Because of the folding from both the sides, the yolk sac ends up forming the gut tube. And whatever is left out still is called as a definitive yolk sac that will remain. Right? So you can see that is here. So what happens is, you have the definitive yolk sac which is still connected to the midgut loop by this stalk kind of thing which is called as a vitello intestinal duct. So the part before this vitello intestinal duct is the foregut. The midgut is in communication with the yolk sac and then the part distal is the hindgut. So this is our midgut now. So after good development, you can see this is how it is initially your um, foregut, midgut, hindgut, foregut, midgut, hindgut. And eventually it grows. It's, it grows everything that is in our adult body. Here you can see that the midgut loop, midgut forms a loop, which is U-shaped loop. And the soup superior mesenteric artery goes like this so the artery of the midgut is the superior mesenteric artery just to refresh you on this the foregut is supplied by the celiac trunk celiac artery midgut by the superior mesenteric hindgut by the inferior mesenteric artery so this is our midgut loop so what are the derivatives of the midgut like what do we get in our adult body that is derived from this midgut that we're gonna see we have the second third fourth parts of the duodenum why the part distal to the uh, hepatic buds or the part where the pancreatic buds are coming there the midgut starts so that is after the first part of the duodenum so we have the second third and fourth part of the duodenum we have the jejunum and ileum and then we have the cecum and appendix cecum and appendix the ascending colon as well as the proximal two thirds of the transverse colon so we have the do second third fourth part of the duodenum jejunum and ileum the cecum and appendix the ascending colon transverse colon ka right two thirds so all of this forms the midgut ke derivatives right so this second, third, and fourth part of the duodenum are not part of this loop. They come here. This is the duodenum. The loop is formed by the rest of the derivatives. That is, these derivatives. Out of which, jejunum and ileum are the, in the pre-arterial part of the midgut loop. That is, here is the artery. So, this is the pre-arterial part. That forms the jejunum ileum. This post-arterial part forms the rest of the derivatives mentioned here okay so that are the derivatives of the midgut now how does this arrangement right this is how it is currently how does that come to be like this it is because of the midgut rotation so now we're gonna go into midgut rotation so what exactly is midgut rotation it is total of 270 degrees anti-clockwise rotation around the axis of the superior mesenteric artery so this superior mesenteric artery will act as the axis around which this rotation is taking place. This midgut rotation happens in three stages. So before we go into these three stages, I would like to talk about another thing that happens during the same period. And that is called as physiological umbilical hernia. 
so as you see it's called physiological that means it happens as a normal occurrence in every fetus right that's why it's physiological umbilical hernia means the contents of the abdomen herniate out of the abdominal cavity through the umbilicus so we can see again we'll see that here this is our umbilicus so currently if you see in this diagram itself we have our hepatic buds you know the liver is starting to uh, form and then we'll get our mesonephric kidneys which are starting to form on both sides of the abdominal cavity and also the gut loop is also developing so there's not much space in the small abdominal cavity to accommodate all of these things so for a certain point of time the mid gut loop is herniated out of the abdominal cavity through the umbilicus and it remains in a pouch outside the cavity that is called as a physiological umbilical hernia and later it comes back to the abdominal cavity when it does not then we'll see the anomalies and the disorders and diseases but this video is only about the embryology of how it occurs normally so while this loop is herniated some rotation occurs while the loop is returning to the abdominal cavity the rest of the rotation occurs that's what we're going to see now so according to that we have three stages right three stages each 90 degree rotation that is adding to your 270 degrees so first stage is when the whole mid gut loop is outside the abdominal cavity you can see this is the umbilical opening and the loop is outside and the other side is your abdominal cavity so first 90 degree rotation occurs when the loop is outside the abdominal cavity when it is herniated then what happens is the pre arterial segment it returns to the abdominal cavity before the post arterial segment okay so when the pre arterial segment is returning to the abdominal cavity you will get another 90 degree rotation and again when the post arterial segment is returning to the abdominal cavity you will get the last 90 degree rotation so the difference between the stage 1 and the other two stages is and here the whole mid gut loop is rotating here only the pre arterial segment is undergoing rotation here only the post arterial segment is going undergoing rotation so now coming back to stage 1 to understanding how this is ending to be like this and eventually in the adult positions that we have now so talking about stage 1 so here we have the mid gut loop herniated outside so the first stage is where both the loops rotate 90 degree anti clockwise so we're going to just assume that this whole mid gut loop which is u shaped is like this right so 90 degrees anti clockwise rotation will take place and the loop will become like this so now it is like this very easy to understand so that is the first first stage of mid gut rotation 90 degrees anti clockwise rotation of both the pre arterial and post arterial segments now before we go into the second stage what happens is the pre arterial segment grows and becomes coiled so as we discussed the pre arterial segment coils are of duodenum and ileum so they get coiled they grow in length and then the second stage happens so the second stage is from here to here now as you see this is the superior mesenteric artery and this is the superior mesenteric artery first the the pre arterial segment is on the right of the superior mesenteric artery right this is your right this is your left i'll actually write it down so it's not confusing so initially before the second stage the pre arterial segment of the mid gut loop is to the right of the superior mesenteric artery then 90 degrees anti clockwise rotation takes place such a way that this mid gut loop is now towards the left of the superior mesenteric artery as you can see the clear difference here and it is behind the superior mesenteric artery here there there's no overlapping but here the superior mesenteric artery comes to lie in front of the mid gut loop right so if something goes wrong at this stage 
then in the adult you will see that the superior base of the country is lying behind so you will see the uh, consequences of each step going wrong so if this step goes wrong two things can happen either the midgut loop remains on the right itself instead of being on the left because in the adult we say this is a small intestine opens into the large intestine from this side but if the rotation does not take place it will open on the opposite you'll have the small intestine like this and the large intestine like this this will study in the disorders and everything congenital anomalies so that's the first thing that, that can go wrong the second thing is a superior mesenteric artery will not be in front it will end up being behind so there is a second stage when the pre arterial segment is returning into the cavity okay that is the second uh, stage the third stage when the post arterial segment will return to the internal cavity and undergo 90 degree rotation so again you see this is your uh, post arterial segment from here it's basically going to that side there's 90 degree rotation now how is the 90 i cannot explain just remember that at the end of this rotation the transverse colon ends up being in front of this sma right here sma was in front of the pre arterial loop here transverse colon is in front of the sma so if something goes wrong at this stage then in the adult intestines we'll see the sma is in front of the transverse colon so that is the last and the third stage of the midgut rotation so the first second third stage is done now this still does not seem like how our adult uh, midgut looks like right so what happens is there is descent of cecum in this case we can see we have the midgut uh, the the abdomen is like this and the cecum like this and this is the rest so what happens is the cecum descends and there is growth of the gut tube everywhere so as the cecum descends down we get the adult position that is our small intestines your cecum here as in the colon transverse colon so that is the last step of actually midgut develop, developing that is descent of the cecum downwards right so actually that is all about midgut rotation that you need to know for mbbs first year now i'm going to see talk to you about what is there in the first stain about it so this is all that is given about the normal gastrointestinal embryology midgut rotation in the first stain in the next video we'll go in detail about the um, anomalies and abnormalities but this video will only talk about the, the normal process so all that is given here is that we already discussed the midgut is the lower third to the proximal two third of the transverse colon the uh, the right two third then in the sixth week of the development so that the time is important in the sixth week the physiological herniation of the midgut happens through the umbilical ring and then in the tenth week it returns to the abdominal cavity and rotates around the superior mesenteric artery total two seventy degree counter clockwise so from this we get this. that is all that is given about the normal gastrointestinal embryology of the midgut rotation topic so that's all for this video i hope you learned something new i hope i was able to make it easy for you guys and i'll see you guys in the next one bye